The Canon EOS RP is the most affordable full frame sensor camera you can buy right now. And because of that, I've made a list of accessories which are the most affordable compatible accessories that I recommend for this camera. And the first one I'm going to recommend in the absolutely non-negotiable, if you have this camera, you need to get this accessory is a screen protector for the back of the camera. A screen protector costs, it's under like $10 for a pack of two or three. The screen on the camera is the most likely thing to break. It's the most fragile part of the camera. And most cameras that eventually end up in the garbage end up there because of the broken screen. And because this camera is so affordable, if you break the screen, the cost of replacing the screen is likely going to exceed the price of replacing the camera. So you just end up throwing the camera away. But for under $10, you can stop that from happening. And these screens are very, very fragile. I know a guy who just brushed his wedding ring against it one time and broke the screen. And that, kids, is why you should never get married. Now, the next accessory I am going to recommend is a UV filter for the lens on your camera. The lens on the camera is the second most fragile thing, the second most likely thing to get scratched or damaged. And if you put a UV filter on the front of your lens, a couple things happen. One, if you're out in the field and you get some dirt or dust or debris on that lens, it means you can just wipe it off with your t-shirt and you're gonna be able to keep it clean and you're gonna get better image quality because you can clean that so easily. If you get dirt or dust and debris on the actual front element of the lens, that needs to be cleaned properly with a cleaning brush or a blower. It's a very delicate operation and you don't wanna be just rubbing something on it. That means if you get something on the lens, it's probably gonna stay there till you get home and you can clean it properly using a UV filter is going to stop that from happening. The next thing I'm gonna recommend and what you can see on the camera right now is a cage. I love to have cages on all my cameras and every camera I own has a cage. Now, the nice thing about a cage is if you need the functionality, you want that extra level of protection, you can put it on, but if you don't want it and you want the camera to be a little bit smaller in your hand, you can take it off. So it's an accessory that you can take on and off. You don't get just stuck with the form factor that you get with the cage, but, the big bonuses of the cage is one, if you're shooting video, you've got all these attachment points to turn it into more of a cinema rig type thing if you want to do that. Two, you are protecting a camera which is basically a high quality plastic body and you can see all sides of the camera bar the back are sort of well protected by this cage. So if you bump into something, you're more likely to hit the metal cage than the actual plastic body of the camera. This is particularly true at the bottom of the camera. The bottom of the camera is the most likely thing to get scratched up and damaged over time as you set it down and take it up off things, whether it be out in the field or in your office or in a studio. That is the place when they're checking used cameras to see what kind of life they had. The first thing they do is they look at the bottom of the camera and see how scratched up that bottom is. The other thing about this cage is it actually has an Arca Swiss plate built into it. So if you have any compatible Arca Swiss tripod, whether it be a mini one like this tripod or a full size one like I use for my videos, you are able to just put that on like this and you don't need to worry about a tripod plate. You just take the camera on and off with the cage. So you don't have to worry about taking a tripod plate on and off. You don't have to worry about losing a tripod plate. It's always there on the camera. And particularly when I'm in the studio and I'm not worried about the camera being small or portable, that's why every single camera I have has a cage or sort of a base plate on it. That way those just go directly onto any of the tripods that I have in my studio and I don't have to sort of chase around and, and swap plates around. Now, the next thing everyone should have in the most underrated accessory of all time is the tripod. It doesn't seem like a very exciting thing, but the fact is by having a tripod, you can get shots that you absolutely cannot get any other way. Uh, first of all, you're gonna be able to do time-lapse. You are going to be able to family photos where you're in the shot. You are going to be do, able to do astrophotography, star trails. You're gonna be able to do long exposure with moving waterfalls. These are all photos that, that can't be achieved without a tripod. And when you take these photos, they are the photos that people see and go, wow, this is something special. This looks like a professional photo. They immediately don't look like something that was taken on a phone, which is one of the biggest challenges with people who buy cameras nowadays, that the phones are so good that they want to differentiate their photos. So when they show them to people, they look like they've used a camera. Well, the tripod is a key to getting those kind of photos. Now, tripods can be very, be very, very expensive, up to $1,000, but the one I'm gonna recommend is a $79 tripod. 
I can't show it to you right now because I'm actually using it for this camera angle here. But the fact is, uh, I've done a video about it previously, so I'll throw some clips up here and I'll put a little link uh, down with the links to all the uh, products in the description down below. So you can go through there and have a look at that complete video. But it's under $80. It goes taller than me in total height. It also converts to a monopod. One of the legs comes off and converts to a monopod. It's got legs that can adjust to all different angles. You can actually hang the camera upside down to get close to the ground and get sort of macro photo, macro video. So it's an incredibly versatile, well-built tripod under $80. I couldn't recommend it highly enough, and I literally use mine every day, even though I have $1,000 tripods. Now, the next thing is, if you are shooting video, the quality of your audio is probably more important than the quality of your video. It's a lot easier to watch a sort of shaky or grainy footage video when there is good, clear sound than it is to watch an incredibly clear and detailed image with terrible, crackly, or distant sound. Uh, fortunately, for under $100, uh, only recent re recently released, you can get the Rode Video Micro 2. This is a fabulous little microphone. The sound quality is literally pro level. When used right, you can't tell the difference between this and sort of a $300 microphone. It doesn't take any batteries. It's just completely plug and play. It comes with a cord to plug into either your camera or your phone or your computer. It comes with this normal plosive filter, but it also comes with a furry sort of wind sock, dead cat they call it, for using outdoors. So it has everything you need in a package that is well under $100. So that is my sort of number one recommendation as a really budget-friendly microphone for the Canon EOS RP. Now, the next thing I'm gonna recommend is an adapter so you can use older EF lenses on your RF mount EOS RP. That's because RF lenses are quite expensive and EF lenses, since they're sort of seen as the old DSLR lenses, have gotten much cheaper and you can find them used for a good bargain or even new, they're often on sale for much less than the comparable RF mount. And the only thing that's different between a lot of these is not the image quality, it's just the fact that you have to use this little adapter. And when you use this adapter and when you use EF lenses, the focus performance is just like it would be on one of the old EF cameras. So you're not losing anything there. Some of the RF lenses do have some advanced autofocus features that the old EF lenses don't. But for the most part, whatever the EF lenses and how they were performing on an old EF camera, they will perform that well on an RF camera. It's just a native mount that just sort of connects the... Uh, sort of sends the connections through. It just sends the signal through. It doesn't actually process anything. So all of these cheap adapters essentially work the same. And I think this one is, I think it might be only 50 or 60 bucks. It's super cheap. And just to show you how that works, this is the, uh, the lens that pretty much everybody has. This is the Nifty 50. And we just throw it on the adapter. There's our RF mount. And then we remove this lens. This is my little street photography lens. I'll link that in the description below. I'm gonna do a video about that. I use this for street photography. It's a 35 F 1.4 manual focus lens. So here's our Nifty 50 adapted. And yes, as you can see, that's still a reasonably compact setup. It's not as compact as using the native mount RF lens. The image quality is very similar. So you can adapt all your old RF lenses or it opens up a world of opportunity of buying at garage sales, eBay, used, or even sort of discounted new lenses on the EF mount. So that is a cheap way to get a whole bunch of different looks from your RF camera. And while we're looking at adapters, now this one I think is really interesting. It opens up a whole world of possibilities. This is a Canon RF to M42 screw mount adapter. This allows you to use vintage screw mount lenses on the Canon EOS RP. And there are more there are more screw mount lenses in the world right now than any other lens system, I believe. I'm not sure, but I believe that's the case. But beyond that, they're very inexpensive and they give you a completely different look that you don't get with modern lenses. And for example, this, this is a camera and lens combination. I think I bought this for 50 bucks uh, and I only bought it with the, with the lens just so I could get the lens. Uh, this is a Helios 44.2. It is a very popular lens if you sort of look it up and it gives a really interesting vintage look to your photos, something that people would you know try getting with Instagram filters and stuff like that and won't even come close. And 
And now we have this vintage lens on our very modern camera. Uh, as I said, this is the 44.2. My favorite is the Helios 44M. I will put a link to the adapter, but also put a few different lenses I recommend. My favorite is the Helios 44M, and that, that link I'll put through will take you straight through to the eBay listing, so you can see in there uh, what I'm talking about. You should be able to get that lens for under $100, and it's one of my favorite lenses of all time. In addition to that, once you stop it down because of the way the lens is designed, it's like uh, it was a vintage time that they had just started using multi-coat. So it was one of the first multi-coated lenses of all time, which is what modern lenses are. And I've used it for professional photography and particularly uh, product shoots. It just gives a really interesting look, but it has enough clarity and detail that it is completely usable. People don't go, oh, you're using a lens that you only paid 60 bucks for on eBay. So I have done paid gigs where I sort of sold the photos with that lens. Now, the next accessory is a camera strap. Funnily enough, it is one of the more expensive items in the lineup, but it is kind of a lifelong investment and you buy one of these and you can use it for the rest of your life. Importantly, it is a removable camera strap. And the reason that's important is if you ever take the camera and you put it on a tripod, you don't want the strap hanging down where it's sort of, sort of can catch and pull the whole tripod over and break the camera. I also find when I'm sort of in a restaurant or cafe or I'm st stopping somewhere for a break and I'm not actually using the strap on myself, just having it hanging there or sitting on the table where it can get caught on and the whole thing get, can get pulled on the floor is just a risk and I've actually had that happen to me and I lost a lens to that one time. So I recommend a removable camera strap and this one just comes on and off really easily and it is super strong. Even though these anchors look quite small, it is super strong. I've never had any issues with this failing and I've carried around sort of big four to 600 millimeter wildlife lenses on it. So. This is my recommendation. You definitely want a removable camera strap. This is the one that I use. The other thing, and I love this for street photography, is when I um, don't want to be carrying the camera around my, my side and I just want to kind of be hanging down at my side and have it in my hand most of the time, I use this little wrist cuff. And it's part of the same system, so I don't have to change anything as far as the anchor points on the camera goes. I just change the strap over. And this is great for street photography because it's super inconspicuous. You're just walking around and you just got this little wrist strap on, gives you a bit of confidence. If you get bumped or whatever and the camera slips out of your hands, it's just gonna grab and it's not gonna fall on the ground and break. So uh, street photography, this is my number one use. Also sort of, at, sort of at birthday parties and stuff where I don't, really want to look like a photographer with the big sort of sash going around me because uh, wearing a camera strap does kind of sort of scream photographer. So the little wrist strap is sort of much less conspicuous. Now these next two are camera bags and I recommend a lot of different camera bags, but most of the camera bags that I use and recommend are quite expensive, but I got a couple that are extremely affordable. And the first one is this little low pro pouch bag. Now this just looks like sort of a little messenger satchel type thing. And I love it because once again, it looks like a street bag, doesn't look like a camera bag at all. It's actually capable of holding the camera plus a spare lens, plus, plus a little bit of extras. It actually can expand if you need a little bit of extra space for snacks and what have you, or you have a jacket that you take off and you wanna stick in the bag. Now you've sort of significantly expanded the size of this thing, so it can be sort of smaller or larger, and um, it's, sometimes it's on sale really cheap. I'll put the links in the description down below to the cheapest prices I could find, but generally it is well under $100. So if you're looking for a cheap on-the-go camera bag, the other thing when I use this camera bag, because it's so easy to access and it's just hanging at my side, I don't have any need for the sort of the big camera strap. I just kit it in here and then I usually will have the wrist strap with me. And then when I need to shoot, I just take it in and out like this. I do my shooting and I put it back and I'll just sort of store it in there. So that's my first recommendation. My second one is uh, a small one. It is sold, I think on Amazon only. It's like a generic name brand, but it's about 50 bucks and it will hold the camera plus a number of lenses, accessories, microphones. It is a small lightweight bag with a lot of padding, but I like it because it's cheap, but can still hold the camera and there's sort of plenty of space in here. And I'll just show you how the camera fits in. So there you've got the camera and you can see there's still a ton of room in there for sort of lenses and everything else. And 
yeah, my most recommended, really, really budget-friendly camera bag, as I said, uh, somewhere around $50. Now, if you have ever wondered, all right, I've got the EOS RP, I've heard a bit about this new Canon R7. If you've ever wondered which one's better and what's better for what, I have a detailed comparison between the Canon R7 and the EOS RP, and I've just thrown it on screen now. So if you're ever curious which one's right for you, or if you want to upgrade, spend the extra money for that camera, just check out that video.